Hi all, so I wanted to see what uh, Half-Life 2 actual model scenes would look like ray traced. So I revived an old model of mine, it's not, it's not recent, uh, I've actually abandoned uh, working on it twice since 2005. So the idea here is only to alter the lighting, keep the original model. Others have done the same thing in the past, they have, but they have done all kinds of recreations of Half-Life in their own vision. This isn't that. This is to see if the scenes simply relit will stand up to the test of time, so to speak. The scene being rendered at right now is DM Lockdown. It's uh, one of Half-Life's multiplayer deathmatch arenas. A lot of lighting has been added. Photometric IES down lighting, spotlights, point lights, and area, area lights as well as envir environmental lights. Only one part changed due to inadequate texture resolution, and that's a big problem in uh, ray tracing, are the uh, right side glass panels. So I had to uh, improve the quality of those textures to allow the grill, the me metallic grill in the glass to show. Before I render the next shot, I will turn off a spotlight that is producing uh, unwanted visual effects for the next shot. I could automate this, but I decided to do it manually on the fly. Now, as you will see, this point of view is as simple as it comes. A two floor hallway with gallery and a railing and a metal grate at the far end, but ray traced with all the right lighting makes all the difference in this shot. Actually, all the spotlights are from the original lighting, only the IES is new and it looks quite good. While this is rendering, I'll tell you what I'm up to. Essentially, I'm completing the ray tracer implementation to pave the way to adding the unbi an unbiased renderer. While working in the modeler, it's the most practical way to immediately see the result of your work. As you can see, a simple scene properly lit can make any low poly shot look really complex fooling the viewer. I mean, I don't even have bump mapping implemented in the ray tracer and it totally, and it totally passes. Now we will move on to the last shot of DM Lockdown. It's the infamous video game bathroom scenes. Well, DM Lockdown is a prison, so uh, communal showers are also present. You know, as a joke, they should have added a soap bar while you're playing the video. While you're playing the game, you could use the soap bar and uh, throw it at a player or throw it on the ground, and they wipe out. I did the very basic changes to this scene. I did far less than all other scenes that I'm going to render. Some scenes lend themselves very well to the basics. This is one of those areas. And when rendered looks really great, except for the low texture quality of course. As you can see, not all render elements are supported in the current ray tracer. So completing it will only simplify the task of porting the same work to an unbiased renderer. Now I'm going to load the opening scene in Half-Life 2. It's D1 train station 01, it's the train station scene. At first I will hide some utility layers, then show a few various camera shots of this map before moving on to the rendering. Unlike the previous model, I need to select internal and external rendering nodes. Each node adju adjusts various lighting factors for two different lighting situations. Now some people might find this scene a little too dark, but I like it this way. I mean, I could have adjusted the gamma a little more to brighten up the scene, but I actually like it this way. More light could have been added if I had not blocked the light beams from the ceiling area lights. Unfortunately, the light was rendering inverted. Basically, the window mullions were lit and the glass panes were unlit when hitting a surface. So I took them out. I could have added fog and god rays. I may attempt that later. This next final shot of the train station is from the outside. I'll resize the render region so you can see this shot at its best. I did make one small change to the scene. I added the tufts of grass. In the game this is automated, so my adding it doesn't really change the original design of the, of the level.
and the ray trace rendered results, well, they look great. So to answer my first question, can older game levels cut it today with minimal improvements? Well, my answer is yes. Are these guys clones? Well, only Valve knows. 